It's only Monday, but surely we have to bring at issue together to break this all down. Chantal Hébert is in Montreal, Andrew Coyne is in Toronto, and Paul Wells joins us in Ottawa tonight. Okay, uh, let's start with, I think, my biggest question I had when I heard the news. Is this resignation of Jane Philpott in some ways perhaps more damaging than uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould? Chantal. Well, it, it does pile up. And this resignation from a well-respected, well-liked minister who did not have a dog in the SNC-Lavalin fight comes at a time when Canadians uh, are trying to make up their minds about how damaging they think this uh, saga should be to the mm -hmm. prime minister. And she seems to be saying, well, whatever you're thinking, pause and reflect on the fact that I, a cabinet minister of talent, can't find his version credible enough to defend. Andrew, what did you make of it? Uh, I agree with everything that was just said there. This is uh, one of the absolute mainstays of this government, the most universally admired, most competent minister, and another minister other than uh, uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould. So it is validating of a lot of the things she was saying. This was not a resignation to spend more time with her family. I mean, this resignation was absolutely di directly aimed at the prime minister, at the government, declaring no confidence in the prime minister, and specifically on this question of the interference in the prosecution. Uh, it will, I think, resonate with a lot of liberals. You can't dismiss this as either some people are trying to say that it was just sour grapes on Jody Wilson-Raybould's part or that it's partisanship, the uh, conservatives going after them. This is an absolute uh, pillar of the liberal establishment saying this. And it would be disappointing for a lot of people too, Paul, given the, what they, many people think of Jane Philpott. A lot of people had started to talk themselves into various reasons why Jody Wilson-Raybould's departure could be blamed on Jody Wilson-Raybould. Uh, one MP uh, quickly apologized after saying, after blaming it on, on her dad. Um, as Oscar Wilde said about losing parents, uh, one is tragedy, but two starts to look like carelessness. Um, it, it's possible to imagine that if the Prime Minister had responded to Jody Wilson-Raybould's uh, um, departure with some kind of grace, some kind of apparent awareness of current events, with anything but a, a solid week of talking points, a news conference about moon exploration, uh, that maybe Jane Philpott would have, uh, could have been persuaded that, that some of these concerns were being taken seriously. Yeah. But, but he didn't, so she didn't. I want to read one part of the, the letter. I mean, there's lots of parts that struck me, but one that I felt was very much directed uh, maybe at the Prime Minister, but certainly at, at, at Cabinet. She writes at one point, but I must abide by my core values, my ethical responsibilities and constitutional obligations. There can be a cost to acting on one's principles, but there is a bigger cost to abandoning them. I mean, she doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room here for the Prime Minister, does she, Chantal? No, uh, and, but even if she'd left him more so far, he's failed to take up any of the wiggle room he's had over the past three weeks to give a serious accounting of what went on, uh, what his stake actually is, not in little bits and pieces uh, and not in talking points, to the Canadian people. Uh, and what this resignation tells us is that it seems that he wasn't any more convincing, or maybe he didn't even bother, uh, to his full cabinet, uh, the first people that he would have explained this to, because if he, Justin Trudeau, had come up with a, a, a rationale that people felt they could defend, maybe we wouldn't be working tonight discussing this on a panel. So how, how damaging is it then, Andrew, to his leadership? Because I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, you can, we can have conversations about the, you know, the deferred prosecution agreements and all that, but what about his leadership and what this tells us about it? Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see ultimately where, where Cabinet goes in this. In the short term, it sounds like they're rallying around it, but I think they ought, ought to be asking themselves why. Does Jane Philpott know something they don't know? Probably not. Probably she knows exactly what they know. It was enough to move her to say, what I have seen and what I've heard was intolerable. I cannot have confidence in this government. I would be really interested to hear from cabinet ministers why they differ with her on this. What specifically gives them confidence in this government, gives them confidence in the way they've handled this whole issue? Uh, that, that she does not. I, th I think, again, I think a lot of people will be wondering why their judgment is superior to hers on this. Paul, Paul was in uh, enthusiastic agreement there, Paul. Yeah. Look, it's time, it, it's time to quit with the talking points. It's time for, pe it's time for someone in this government who, uh, who still believes in staying in this government to talk to Canadians as though they're Canadians, as though they're fellow citizens. Jane Philpott's uh, comment about uh, her constitutional obligation sounded to me like a purposeful echo of this sentence from the Open and Accountable Government Handbook, the ethical 
how-to manual that the Prime Minister told every minister to read and take to heart. The Attorney General is bound by the constitutional principle that the prosecutorial function be exercised independently of partisan concerns. And then the Prime Minister sent 10 people to warn Jody Wilson-Raybould about the elections. That's a direct contravention of what he told his Attorney General was her duty. No wonder ministers are quitting. So but what, the, yeah, go it's, ahead, Chantal. Yeah. It's, I, I can't think of a time when a minister is, is, is resigned in solidarity with another minister. Uh, and that is why it goes to Justin Trudeau's leadership. Because this isn't about some minister being caught in a conflict with the prime minister right. as the second mm -hmm. in command or, or the partner uh, of the minister who is at the center of the controversy. This is some, and this isn't over a major direction of the government. Uh, so it does go back to if Jane Philpott doesn't feel comfortable defending Justin Trudeau, how, what are voters supposed to make of that? And I watched, and we all did, the prime minister just now, and he doesn't seem to see that that is what people are seeing. And, and think of what she is giving up. This wasn't somebody who was on the way down. This is a rising star in the cabinet. People talk about her as potentially a future finance minister. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a major sacrifice she has made on a point of principle. So uh, what, and that's so, a, that's, yeah. I'll just say that's a good yeah. day for democracy when people are willing to do that. What, what does he do, though? So that we've, you all agree there's damage. You all agree that this is unprecedented. Is there anything he can do to undo this or to scale it back? Or, I don't know, Paul, beyond, I guess, saying something is what you want him to do. But is there well, anything he can do? Tonight in Toronto Danforth, we saw what he's going to try and do. At a climate change rally, he said, uh, we need to keep in mind the bigger picture. It's these, these issues, these things that seem to preoccupy Jane Philpott are important, but we need to keep in mind the bigger picture. Um, that's eerily reminiscent of what his man Matthew Bouchard told Jody Wilson-Raybould. I know you care about the independence of the prosecutorial function, but we need to win elections. Um, uh, the, 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 the Trudeauvian, I was going to say the Liberal, but no. Justin Trudeau's version of appealing to principle is to say, uh, look, never mind this, we're in an election year. Andrew, uh, I, but, I would but, submit that he should do something else than that. Okay, but, the, but there's yeah. also, by, by appealing to looking at the big picture, and I think it's a fair argument to use, look at the big picture. Do you want to throw all this out, throw the baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. The problem is that as this crisis continues to escalate and he fails to rise to the challenge of uh, taking control of the narrative uh, and talking to people about it, there will come a time when people who believe in the big picture will say, you are in the way of the big picture, right. Prime Minister. Right. What he has to realize uh, is that this is not a question of communications or strategy. If, you know, that either what Ms. Wilson-Raybould said is true, in which case he needs to come clean and explain and apologize and whatever else, or it's not true, in which case he has to show evidence why it's not true. But he can't just, he can't just sort of strategize or, or, or communicate his way out of this. And I fear that if he was aware of that, he wouldn't be in this problem in the first place. Well, presumably, though, Paul, the, the, the response comes from Jerry Butts on Wednesday. <laughs> He's not the yeah, prime but... minister. No, no. But still, presumably, that's where the, the, the rebuttal comes from. Um, I mean, what's Jerry Butts going to say? That uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould was confused in her uh, activity, that sometimes she seemed to be motivated one way, sometimes by another. That's great. But, I mean, she's gone now, and the Prime Minister's still the Prime Minister. And uh, members of his caucus are still saying, uh, you know, there was one on, on Vashi Kapilis' show today, mm -hmm. saying that uh, SNC-Levelin is entitled to a deferred prosecution agreement. Which is um, really not a word liberals want to use. Yeah, I mean, like, maybe this is why they stick to talking points, because when they actually talk, it sounds like that. Chantal, last word to you, then, on, on whether you think Wednesday will change anything for them. I know that they believe that. I think all that it will change for them is to leave the prime minister no other option but to go to bat more seriously or to take himself out of play. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Our first of many ad issues this week. Appreciate it. <laughs>